Welcome back. Welcome all, friends, foes, heels, baby faces. Uh, we got rookies. We got vets. We got everybody who's welcome to the Soup Brothers Wrestling Podcast. That's right. After a the longest hiatus in our show's history, quite frankly. The show is back with your host, Cameron Osborne. Of course, I'm sitting here with my co-host, Mike the Shoot Shepherd. Always. 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 Mike, how are you? We missed a week, and like I said, you know, normally we are known for chugging out shows in four-day spans, five-day spans, but no, we've taken uh, more than a week off. Yes, and you know, the wrestling world doesn't stop and wait, and you know, we can't... We can't just cover every single thing at this point. It would get too bloated. We'll never catch up. So See, we'll you, do some. You got to think that like uh, NBA analysis or uh, NHL analysis, you know, CFL workers, they have their times off. They know when the season's going to start and when the season's yeah. going to stop. But that doesn't happen in the professional wrestling uh, canon. And, you know, sometimes you just uh, you just miss stuff, you know. And can't watch every game. So I'm, if I miss a Leaf game, I'm not. I don't usually go back and watch the full three hours. I'll just watch the highlights. That's a good point. Why do we? <laughs> like, there's probably people out there with Toronto Maple Leafs podcasts who don't go back and rewatch the whole game. Yeah. Yet you and I sitting here with our professional wrestling podcast, we're going back and we are uh, we're watching oftentimes the whole thing. I know. I never watch Wednesday Night Live. <laughs> I uh, I always watch it Thursday morning. It's the Thursday morning war, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah, mine's uh, yeah, well, yeah. I never watch it live either. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's nice having the option after of uh, just kind of skimming through. Don't need to see this entrance. Don't need to listen to Corbin talk. Okay, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's what I've always wanted. The skip category. So Mike, we did miss a couple Raws and Smackdowns. So I think our last show would have been two Thursdays ago. So I guess we are a couple weeks behind. So Mike, anything you wanna? Anything we should catch up on? Uh, well, just to even further confirm, I guess uh, Undertaker is retired. They did a whole, I don't know, they devoted SmackDown to him for whatever reason. The locker room came out. They were all chanting, thank you, Taker. <laughs> that was weird. So, <laughs> it was kind of weird. We're like, all right, whatever. But uh, again, we have to fill time. We have to fill time. that filled time. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so pretty much, <laughs> I guess that was the big moment of that week. Uh, then more Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle came down, had an interview about his feet. But apparent, apparently Vince McMahon loved that story. I don't know. I think I don't know if it's a true story or not. He said he got frostbite, and then he, now he doesn't like wearing shoes. And now I, I just thought it was kind of like an extension off of his MMA career <laughs> yeah, that's what because I essentially you know. he has the MMA getup, no shoes, yeah. tight, everything but the gloves, everything but the gloves. Really, I thought it was kind of an extension of that, and then it, it's a gimmick that works. But uh, who knows? Maybe yeah. maybe Matt Riddle. Either way. Either way. It works in both ways. The gimmick, the fighter, and the stoner. <laughs> However you play it, perfect gimmick. <laughs> um, then, of course, just uh, yeah, more crap with Seamus and Jeff Hardy that we don't need. There was yep. a bartender. and This program yeah. is extending. <laughs> uh, AJ Styles, great intercontinental title match with Drew Gulak. And that's pretty much all the important stuff from SmackDown for now. Yeah, that was that's that's all the big stuff from SmackDown for now. I guess we are mere uh, two weeks away, I think, from Extreme Rules, which is now the horror show. The horror show Extreme Rules. I don't get <laughs> that's that. That's Something else. I don't know. Yeah, I get. I, don't know, I think it's going to mean there's going to be some. Yeah, it's going to tie into whatever. Well, the there are, it is going to be pretty horrific because we've got the Swamp Match, uh, and as we found out on Raw, we're going to have an eye for eye match, where the literal winner is uh, the person who gouges out their opponent's eyes. Yeah. Now this is going to be similar to the Moxley Santana. Uh, eye for an eye match, except this, it, except in this, this case, this, this will, is an actual <laughs> plucking of the eye, removal from the head. And this is going to be huge going forward for many, many reasons. Like either Seth Rollins will have to wrestle the rest of his career with an eye patch, <laughs> or <laughs> Rey Mysterio is going to have to wrestle the rest of his career with an eye patch. Yeah, I oh. guess it'd be easier for Ray. He just keeps wearing that little thing on his. Yeah, he, he could kind of maybe play it under his mask or something. It's a clear yeah. one or something. Or he gets know. his other eye and then he becomes Daredevil. Ooh, that'd be cool. Uh, but yeah, how are they going to do like, They're going to do some sort of special effect. I want some gory shit. Some I want it to be like Kill Bill Volume 2 when she plucks oh, when out she the bitch's plucks other the eye out of a... Just steps on it in her bare foot. And squishes between her toes. Ugh. Yeah, something... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Dom when it comes out and steps on it. Dom, ooh, okay, so we're seeing a Ray victory. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. Is there... Uh, I guess that is the stip, right? So it's not eye a... Eye for an eye. But it's not like Street Fight rules. It's not no DQ rules. I don't think it's rules. like I pin you and then I pull your eye out. It's I just it's whoever just... plucks the first eye <laughs> 
believe so. Okay, so it's not it's like crazy, a, but so it's honestly. not like a hair for hair match where you get your pin or submission and then <laughs> you cut the hair. It's not like. <laughs> like pin yeah, I don't think so. Okay, I I am curious. I am curious. So that's to the intrigue. Yeah, that's out. where the horror show comes. That's in, where I the guess. horror show comes in. I like putting graphic. a little a little prefix before uh, the pay per view name. Anyways, yeah. just naming things things I think is cool. We have you know yeah. like like we It'll have differentiate. So like, now we'll always know the twenty tour extreme rules was the horror show. And like we have you know we had the Great American Bash will be coming up and Fighter Fest in the show and we got announced that they're bringing back Fight for the Fall and just put names on things and then it gives them a little <laughs> more importance. I don't know the horror show maybe a little bit yeah. more important than uh, a kendo stick on a pole. Yeah, and they, the gra- they changed the graphics up this year. They're all, like, purple and green and shit. Oh, yeah, maybe all the, uh, it'd be, like, if all the Extreme Rules were something from horror movie-esque. Yeah, well, we've already got a couple. I mean, we've got the Swamp match. We've got uh, this eye-plucking match. we got Dolph Ziggler in a still to-be-determined stip. To-be-determined uh, stip. I would like a Saw 5 match. A Saw 5 match? Yeah, we just got... <laughs> blades and traps everywhere. Yeah, it's like yeah, just traps. People try to get out of it. Uh, jigsaws wanting to play games with all these people. Just uh, just keep picking horror movies. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So on Raw, that's pretty much it. Dolph Ziggler's been building up his shit. Uh, Iconics. I don't know if you, did you see Peyton Royce hit this twisting brain buster? Her new finisher. Oh no, it looks good. The internet was blowing up. It was amazing. <laughs> the internet was on fire. Uh, yeah, her and Billy Kay back to back weeks got singles wins. So I'm always looking looking happy at those iconics. That's uh, that's what we call momentum. Momentum, baby. Uh, yeah, so they were good. Seth and Ray, they're still doing their thing. Bobby Lashley, an MVP. We got the uh, they presented the new United States Championship. New designs. Yeah, and I gotta say, it looks much better in the pictures than it did at first on the video. I don't know what was the angle of the lighting, but once I saw the actual pictures, it looked pretty nice. Yeah, I think I saw the photos first before okay. I watched yeah. it happen. Uh, yeah, I like it. It's cool. Yeah, it's classy. It's, nice big eagle. It's more like retro. More a little more retro, and now uh, that that sort of seems like the last of the titles that got needed a redesign. Uh, at least certainly uh, since well, that initial brand split in twenty fifteen or sixteen yeah. or whatever. Yeah, the U.S. has definitely been the one that's gone the longest without a, a change. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I'd still like to change those tag titles a bit. But yeah, yeah, they're they're a little too nondescript. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But we, uh, we, don't anyways, e- we don't even know who the champion is on those belts. So uh, no, it's, it's all we never it's, really. it's all a crapshoot. Uh, but no, uh, also Sasha and Bailey just continue to kill it. They're killing it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Car- car- uh, uh, carrying the women's carrying carrying the women's side. Carrying on this everything. Show. Yeah, carrying uh, the tag division, the shows. Which is surprising uh, because SmackDown, the SmackDown, the rest of the SmackDown's women's roster has just sort of fallen off. Lacey Evans, Naomi, Tamina, is, are all Dana, Dana Carmella yeah. are all like in perpetual yeah. six, six. They were having tags. a good ride up to Money in the Bank, and then after that, like, well, we don't need the rest of you. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't need you. We don't need you anymore. Uh, Becky's pregnant. Uh, where's <laughs> Shayna? No, never mind. Uh, yeah, Shayna, we have not seen in a long time. No, not since my in the bank. And Bailey, Bianca Belair. God damn it. Yeah, no, it's uh, so ba- Bailey and Sasha are getting ninety five percent of the uh, screen time. But they're killing it. And they're killing it while they do it. Yeah. Um. Uh, that, that was pretty much it for Raw. Ruby Riot's back as well. She had a couple matches. Hmm. Um, yeah, those are all my highlights to wrap things up quickly. Yeah, what? Uh, it's a quick little wrap up of the things that we missed. Of course, we had both week of Fighter Fest. We'll talk about Fighter Fest after the break and um, the Great American Bash on NXT, which is going to be coming up. But before uh, before we get to the real action of the week, let's kick <coughs> off. Uh, let's kick off with the tweet of the week. <coughs> Excuse me. You are excused, sir. Thank Twitter, you. Twitter. I hardly know her. <laughs> But you had access to Twitter on your uh, six-hour isolation, North. Oh, oh yeah. Of co- oh, of course. Yep. Cell service. <laughs> uh, cell yeah. service dropped out a bunch going on the way up there because you're you're past Sudbury. Uh, yeah, you're deep in the sticks. You are deep in the sticks where you're almost wondering how they do it. <laughs> how do they do? You know, you're just you're just sitting there. How do they? Those invisible five G waves coursing through your body. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I meant they like the uh, the people, the people who live there. But uh, oh, I thought you meant how do the cell phone companies? 
Oh, how did they do it? I don't know. Uh, they, 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 they sent a moon. They sent a man to the moon. So I'm not really surprised yeah. of anything that they do anymore. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's jump ahead to Twitter. It's the tweet of the week. It's the tweet of the week. This week, I'm sure you heard early on in the week. Uh, Kanye, Kanye said that um, he doesn't support Trump anymore, and that he will actually be uh, running for. Um, <laughs> running for office, which I'm sure is something you know he said. Something he said he was going to do back in like 2016. So I'm glad he's finally yeah. committing to it. But um, he's running the same party. He's just going to oppose. Like uh, eh, who the who, who the hell knows? It's probably know. not. It's all it's all bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably it's probably all bullshit, and it's probably not actually going to happen. But uh, WWE superstar is following in Kanye's foot with this week's uh, or sorry shoes with this week's tweet of the week by <laughs> Mickey James. Mickey Mickey, James. Mickey James, uh, who posted on Twitter, uh, actually just two days ago, official announcement, I have decided to fulfill my true destiny and give the people what they really need. I am running for president. Hashtag MJ2020. You're welcome, America. I'll see you at the polls. Now, is this a shoot? I don't think... (laughs) (laughs) Sadly, I don't think so. (laughs) Sadly, I do not think so. Yeah. No, I probably don't think so either, but uh, well, yes, so she's just uh, clapping back at Kanye, just having a little fun. I don't know. I think this uh, <laughs> I think this uh, woman intends to get as far as she can into the process before, uh, before she stops. Okay. Like, I don't I'm see sure it she happening, would get, uh, but yeah, I think I'm we're going to stay tuned to her Twitter account because... Could, I'm sure she would get further in the process than Kanye would. No, nah, probably not. No, not even like filling out the card. Oh, would he, oh, would he get that. slightly closer? Okay, yeah, in that <laughs> sense, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to being elected, Kanye. Right, would right, right. Mickey yeah, she would, he would get way more votes, but I certainly, yeah, yeah you are right. I think Mickey <laughs> James would probably take those steps needed to get she would a, at least look it up. She would at least look up what to do. <laughs> uh, you're right. Mickey James, uh, your first ever Tweet of the Week championship. Congrats. We haven't, she survived the releasing, but we haven't seen her on TV in a long time. Yeah, she survived the releasing. Uh, maybe they're kind of holding her on for charity event type purposes. Um, her <laughs> and know. Titus O'Neil just yeah, kind of work the charity the event circuit. That's true. Mm-hmm. They need they need those uh, philanthropists. Exactly. They need people to fill those uh, fill those shoes. All righty. Well, congrats, Mickey James, and uh, good luck on your uh, run. Um, let's let us tarry no further however because for the first time in eight years eight nine ten years uh the great american bash has returned to the wwe uh calendar um but in this case it's uh attached to the nxt brand and we have two weeks straight of great american bash nxt what does it mean I don't know, but it's a good wrestling show. NXT, watch and see. Got to tap out a count out of one, two, three. So now I thought it was only gonna be one. I thought it was just a one-off show. No, I think I think from the beginning it was. It two, was just, okay. Okay, I thought uh, I, I must have thought something different, but of course, um, we do have that crazy main event for both North American and uh, WWE or NXT championships coming up the following week. Uh, so let's kick off with night one. Yes, the bash. We got nice, you know, custom ring apron. The ropes are red, white, and blue. A couple uh, sports cars. Yes, some classic American cars. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming they're American made. If they put like a Ferrari there or something, it would be. <laughs> yeah, that would, that, would, that would throw everybody off. No, it was just a, two Mustangs. <laughs> <laughs> but no, look nice. They look like a pay-per-view set. And uh, we just kick right off with a fatal four-way elimination. Number one contenders match for the women's championship. You got Tegan Knox, Mia Yim, Dakota Kai, Candice LeRae. And uh, yeah, just a nice, nice, fun opening bout. Uh, yeah, Candice is the first eliminated. She gets beat up. Um, and then, I don't know, Dakota and Mia. I forget what happens there. Mia just fucks her up. It comes down to. Uh, no, Mia's the one that gets eliminated. It comes down to Dakota and Tegan. Uh, and then Dakota, she does this move called the Chiropractor, which to me always looks like a botched Canadian destroyer. But oh, is that what it was? That's the way it's supposed to land. Apparently. Okay, interesting. I don't know, but uh, Tegan, she hits the molly go round, and the shiniest wizard gets the win, gets a title shot. 
The title shot coming up uh, sometime next week. Next week, yeah, I guess yes. you're right. Yeah, not um, week two of the bash. But yeah, they took reality. took Candice LeRae out super early, and I was like, huh? But then, yeah, it was um, a bit. I thought, uh, yeah, but I then thought maybe it, Mia. It, let, it let everybody else shine, if it were. Yeah, yeah, especially the shiniest wizard there with Tegan. Yeah, getting uh, the uh, getting the victory without uh, what's her goon's name, Gonzalez. Yeah, she wasn't there, yeah. uh, so that was yeah that helped Tegan. Uh, yeah, so good for you. Good for you. Then we had Timothy Thatcher versus One Lorcan. Lor- One just, Lorcan. Yeah, he's getting on a pay per view kind of. Tweet of the week champion uh, One Lorcan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Never forget when he, when I ever forget <laughs> when One Lorcan came out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, I mean that's how you can do it. That's yeah, how you so. do it. That's how you walk away with it. Uh, but he wasn't walking away with this one. He just. Uh, you know, they had a good little grapple fest, but Thatcher locks in that Fujiwara armbar and forces Lorcan to tap out. But then he just kind of holds on extra to be a dick about it. Yeah, I like this role, the the role that Timothy Thatcher is on. You know, he's still he's still on the up and up, getting the push. Yeah, yeah. Since that fight pit, he hasn't looked back. Since the pit he's been fight, doing fight those little promos yeah. every week where he's like, I don't know, talking about fighting <laughs> in a pit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, then we get. Handicap match, Rhea Ripley taking on Robert Stone and Aaliyah. There are no tags, no count out, no DQ. And if Ripley loses, she must join the Robert Stone brand. Mm. And Stone wasn't fucking around. He comes out. He's got the boxing robe on, the gear, sports glasses, mouth guard. The fight of his life here. <laughs> uh, and you know what? The crowd was actually hyped for him. I don't know if they told him to cheer for Stone, but they seemed to like him. They seemed to. He was doing the Muhammad Ali footwork, but. Yeah, Ripley wasn't having it. She just slaps him in the chest, fucks her around. Aaliyah tries to get in. Uh, and then we get some man-on-woman violence as Stone and Aaliyah do double submissions, double suplex. Uh, and Stone tries to steal the pin, but Aaliyah just shoves him away and says, Ah, you're the manager. I'm the client. So he's like, you're right. You're right. But anyways, that's what fucks him up. Rhea Ripley gets up. Uh, yeah, and she applies this double prism trap, double submission. They both tap out, so. Rhea gets the win. Rhea gets the win. You know, I, I don't uh, I don't feel as though uh, the Robert Stone brand is looking hot right now. He kind of feels like the uh, the Drake Maverick, the new Drake Maverick, where he's there. We're gonna make fun of him. We're gonna slap him around, and he yeah. won't do anything for the people he's actually trying to help. Drake Maverick did. No. Who was the t- uh, uh, AOP? Remember, he was uh, he was the authors of Pain. Oh, manager, yeah, yeah. And, and that segment literally ended with him pissing his pants. Like, Robert Stone's already vomited in the middle of the <laughs> ring. I don't see it getting much better for him or Aaliyah. There's going to be a point where we're like, yo, Aaliyah, you got to leave because uh, you, can, you can do better things somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah, and since they split him and Chelsea Green, he's become... Before, he was kind of serious. Now he's just a big comedy. Yeah, now he's like this big joke. And uh, if I was Aaliyah, I wouldn't want to be associated with a big joke. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, for now, she's gotten on TV, so maybe she likes that. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But TV time. Who knows? Let's go on. Roddy Strong has to face his fears and take on Dexter Loomis in the first ever strap match in NXT. I, li- I like a strap match. Out of all That's out of fun. all the steps, I think it's the uh, I think it's one of the cooler ones. Yeah. Out of ladders and hells and cells because i guess i out of hells and cells <laughs> when there's cells and hells and ladders and chairs i uh you sort of you you know you know something cra- you know you, you you almost like know not what's going to happen but yeah. you know the limitations of uh I, I mean, we never see strap matches i don't know what's gonna happen yeah no i like it i like the intrigue and uh yeah, yeah roddy roddy doesn't want to get strapped in so the crowd just trans strap on roddy and uh yeah, eventually he gets him strapped in. Dexter's just dominate him. They fight up the ramp. Dexter goes to open the car trunk. But uh, these are sports cars. I don't even know if he could have fit in there. <laughs> yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Roddy fights back. He avoids being thrown in the trunk. They get back down to the ring. And Bobby Fish comes running out with his new tattoo sleeve. He's got uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. I wonder if there's any fish on it. Who knows? Or any, or any Bobbies. <laughs> a British cop, or a, or I was gonna think like Bobby Knight, or any like no, anybody oh, named famous Bobby. Bobby, famous yeah. Bobbies, Bobby Lee, or 
<laughs> See? <laughs> well, let's keep going. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so he attacks Dexter Loomis. Roddy takes advantage, but Loomis fights back. Uh, and then he gets Bobby in the ring. Or Bobby comes charging at him, but the clever Loomis just uses the strap to clothesline Fish, take him out. And then Loomis wraps the strap all around Roddy, and he hits his Uranagi and locks in the silence. And Strong taps out. What a what what a, what a finisher for a guy like Dexter Loomis. Just the silence. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a perfectly named for him. It's quick. It's to the point. Yeah. And um, yeah. So he continues continues to look strong here. Yeah. Not Roddy, I, th- Dexter. I, th- I think even with a bigger you know with a bigger story, this could have been even better. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess the story, they can only really tell it from one side. Yeah, because t- so far <laughs> there's no talking. Yeah, Roddy's just, I'm scared, I'm scared. But, uh, yeah, he's done. He's done in NXT. Is that what they say? No, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's what you we'll say. Okay, <laughs> we'll, see. We'll, t- we'll save that, uh, we'll save we'll that save take that. for the we'll end of the night. That. Yeah, because uh, Santos Escobar comes out. And he just cuts a little promo about the Lucha Libre culture and how it used to mean something. And NXT is going to rediscover Lucha in his image. Uh, Drake Maverick comes down to interrupt, but he gets beaten down. So Breeze Angle come out to make the save. And I kind of like how they have a new entrance every week. It takes a lot of work. Yeah, I, I never know. It always it almost feels like they're always it a new team. It fools me at first. I know. Yeah, yeah, like, who, who the is this? fuck are these Especially people? this week. Well, well, in part two. We'll but uh, anyways, so that sets up a match for later. We get the main event of night one. Sasha Banks taking on Io Shirai in a non-title match. Uh, and Sasha and Bailey make this grand entrance. They drive out in a convertible. And Bailey is carrying uh, Sasha's corgi named Ryu. Surely after Street Fighter, I'm assuming. I but, can uh, only assume. It was a nice, cute little dog. Uh, but anyways, it's main event time. This is a nice dream match. Sasha's been having a bunch of them and. Yeah, it didn't disappoint me at all. They came out hard. Bunch of shit going on here. Of course, Bailey's out there. She's honking the horn of the car, trying to distract. Um, yeah, there was one spot. Io hits like a big German suplex. Shasha tries to flip and land, but she kind of just lands on her head. Well, I don't. <laughs> th- I, 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 don't I don't think I noticed. I don't think I uh, yeah. remember that one. She's like ninety pounds. She can survive it. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I also love that. Uh, Bailey's wearing that like Sasha Banks '90s looking jacket thing with the big graphics on them. Yeah, that looked cool. I, I was wondering. Uh, yeah, I was wondering how much uh, <laughs> how much they would sell that on the WWE Network because I'm sure between that and the new U.S. title replica, this was a big this was a big uh, week for WWEShop.com. Yeah, lots of merch going lots on. Lots of lots of merch to buy. If this is the time, I'm sure you could use promo code uh, Shoot Brothers for fifteen uh, percent <laughs> off. Uh, yeah. And then one of the coolest spots of the match, uh, Eo's on the ropes. She goes for a springboard. Uh, Sasha just kind of catches her, hits a big kick, and then does this, like, sunset flip suicide bomb thing into the barricade. Into the barricade. Yeah, yeah. This new barricade has provided, like, a whole new set of it's, yeah, stuff to like do it. around it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like body checking a guy into the boards. Yeah, you know? it's 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 oh yeah, or you know, or slam ball. One any one of those <laughs> <laughs> or slam ball. One of those, one of those sports with uh, boards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was, yeah, Bailey. She even got on her knees and bowed to the move after. It was so great. <laughs> uh, but anyways, Sasha goes for a big cross face. Io avoids, or no, Sasha went for the frog splash. Io blocks in the cross face. Uh, so this is when Bailey just throws a tag title in the ring to cause a ruckus. The ref grabs the belt. Bailey clocks Io. Uh, Sasha grabs the other belt, but then Asuka appears out of nowhere. She pulls away the title belt and nails Sasha with the green mist, which we haven't seen from her in a while. We haven't seen we haven't seen the green mist in a few months. Yeah, and then Sasha did a good job though at covering it from the ref. She was blind. Io rolls her up, uh, but she kicks out. So Io just smacks her in the face, hits the moonsault, gets the win. Sasha's first loss in months, it seems. Months and months. Yeah, you're right. It really does seem like that. These two... And, was, and she was cheated a bit, too, so it was fine. That the mist. Yeah, though the mist was a lot of fun. These two, uh, there was no commercial breaks. Did you notice that? Yeah, it was great. Uh, they, I think it was, at least this week, it was sponsored by Mountain Dew. It was spo- it was Thanks commercial. to Mountain Dew, I can finally watch 
interruption yeah. free main event. No picture in picture for this main event. It was no, yeah, no picture in picture. Everything else. Um, this Yoshirai has been on this. She's been on a wild streak. Just work. Just working with all the bests. Yeah, and same with Sasha. And same with Sasha. And you know, and now Yoshirai has 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 beaten the boss. Yeah, and uh, you know it still leaves room for a future uh, contest because Sasha was slightly cheated there. She was slightly cheated. What's going on with Asuka? Is Asuka involved in the tag belts? You know, I guess that's our only thing right now is that this last segment involved all Everybody, of the every show. all of <laughs> all of the women's belts, right? Yeah, NXT tag, SmackDown, and Raw. So, yeah. so we had did, we did have four belts between the four women. Uh, let's keep on. What happened to all these other women? Let's, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying, dog? I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying. But, it was uh, a great, it was a great main event, but come yeah. on, dog. Well, uh, let's find out in week two. Week two of that great <laughs> American bashed. Of course, we have, uh, that winner takes all match. And I'm sure we have other stuff coming up on the card too, but we kick <laughs> off, but we do kick off. With uh, a match between Candice LeRae and Mia Yim, which somehow became a street fight. Yeah, I guess uh, okay. you know, they've had some. They've been beefing for a while now. Mm -hmm. So uh, and they waste no time. They uh, Mia Yim attacks during the entrance. We get right into the weapons, trash cans, chairs, candlesticks. You know the normal stuff. <clears throat> so they're fucking around with that for a bit, uh, and they end up fighting up the stage towards the ramp. Candace shoots Mia with a fire extinguisher, but then <laughs> Mia kicks Candace off the stage, falls through a table with snacks everywhere. There was there was bananas <laughs> and yeah. like little muffins and stuff. It I, was like a grade three catering. Yeah, why the catering, like catering table <laughs> was so close, I don't know. And so shitty. And Normally so they have a nice shitty. spread. These are professional athletes, and they had yeah. like four bananas. A bag of Cheetos. A bag <laughs> Okay, I noticed that too. There, yeah. there was a set. There was one little bag of Cheetos. There was a set dresser out there who really phoned it in. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at you. Went to 7-Eleven and spent five bucks on stuff. See, f see, I, I don't want to say this wouldn't have happened without Fit Finley present, <laughs> but I'm sure there would have be that would have been something that wasn't yeah. overlooked. And I'm like, we need some bagels now. We need some, some bagels. sandwiches. <laughs> some potatoes. <laughs> some potatoes. Something Where's the potato pancakes? I know. Imagine a bunch of like macaroni salad. You know, gets in your hair yeah. and stuff. I mean, uh, uh, maybe she didn't want that. Though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He didn't want to be covered with mayonnaise <laughs> for uh, the rest of the match. That's a good point. Maybe bananas, muffins, and a single bag of Cheetos. <laughs> it's the driest option. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so they fight back to the ring. At one point, Mia Yim pulls out this pair of brass knuckles, goes to nail Candice, but she blocks it with a chair. And they just make this big pile of chairs in the ring. Uh, and then both women fight to the corner, and they end up standing on top of a table, which is yeah, just risky. Kinda, yeah, a little risky, a little shaky. Risky. They're up top, uh, so they're fighting up there. But then uh, Candace gets a hold of the brass knuckles, nails Mia, and then hits this nice big diving, swinging neck breaker onto the pile of chairs and gets the three count. But she ba ba barely gets the three count. Just kind of hurls her oh, arm yeah, just, over she top. Was, yeah, of her Mia. arm was over top. We barely uh, got the three count. Great match. Yeah, great finish. Great match. They worked hard. Like th th this was just thirty or you know twenty maybe ish minutes. There was commercial break in there. It was just hot the whole time. Like we say, NXT mid card women's feuds. Are, every woman on are the card. some of the best mid card feuds uh, yeah. <laughs> on the, the planet company. right now. Yeah. Uh, then we get a little quick squash match here. Bronson and Reed versus Tony Nice. Uh, yeah, a literal squash as Reed just dives off the top rope with that big splash. Gets the win. Bronson Reed looks like this mix between... Oh, no. He's like half... He reminds uh, me of... Do you know the Funkasaurus? No, I don't know that. <laughs> I was going to say he's like half Jeff Cobb. And then someone with a beard. I don't know. He just kind of reminds me of two, like a few different people. Yeah. If oh. you knew Brodus Clay, the Funkasaurus, he he reminds me of him. And yeah, very reminiscing. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> wasn't Bronson Reed uh, held up with Cameron Grimes for the last little while? Maybe. Yeah, he, uh, yeah he's been floating around a few years on NXT. I can't really. quite remember, but uh, who knows? Maybe a sign of things to come. Yeah, or just another Killian Dane. We'll see. 
or just another Killian Dane who does who does show <laughs> up a little bit later. Though. He does show up. Finally. Uh, I think that's yeah. Right now, backstage, we go to Robert Stone as he approaches the beautiful Shotzi Blackheart, uh, and he just says, "You know, the Robert Stone brand's on fire." Shotzi says, "Yeah, dumpster fire." Uh, so no, I ain't gonna join you. So Stone freaks out. He tosses his coffee backwards, uh, which ends up splashing right into Killian Dane. So he lays out Stone, knocks him out. And then Shotzi just comes driving over in her little tank right over his leg, <laughs> which looked like it could actually hurt. Crushing his leg, I'm Crushing sure. Crushing his leg. He's pinned under the tank, screaming in agony. I'm going to die. <laughs> I loved it. This is the point where Stone started to win me over. I loved his his selling here. He sold for the in- it cut to commercial right after that. <laughs> they did picture in picture. Yeah, for he was the screaming. Entire picture in picture. It took four men and Aaliyah to lift this yeah. tank off a of stone. And Shotzi Blackheart <laughs> just kind of drove this over top. Now, did you ever The way I- she came slowly in just said, <laughs> Now, I used I to have it. one of uh like well, yeah, I was 3 or 4 and it was it was like a, it was it was like a car that's like that size. Jeep. It was a Jeep, I think. You know, it was yeah. it was battery powered. I remember you know bring it yeah. in, yeah. charge it, and so that. But the tank version would be sick. Yeah, driving around in a little tank. I can I definitely remember like me and my cousins in the little car. You know, we'd only go like two. You could get probably around the block and back, and then the battery would be dead. Oh yeah. No, oh, this sure. this is like a 1996 battery. That being said, though. <laughs> I'm sure some of these new batteries could last a lot longer, but uh, WWEshop.com, buy your Shotzi authentic tank. Shotzi Blackheart mini tank. Uh, use promo code uh, Shoot Brothers for 15% off. Yeah, it comes with a bottle of green hair dye. Yeah, it comes with your own green hair dye and uh, and like stick on tattoos. <laughs> yeah, but you know this. Uh, if this becomes a thing, you know, just Stone just getting killed and screaming every week. I, yeah, it could win. It could work. It could work. Yeah, Uh, I have no problem with it. (laughs) But let's go on here. Isaiah Swerve Scott is taking on Johnny Gargano. Uh, You know, Swerve doing his thing. He's high flying. Uh, They were, you know, pretty evenly fought for a while. Swerve comes close, but Johnny hits his one final beat, slingshot DDT, and gets the win. Yeah, it was uh, two great guys. Never felt like it could have, never felt like it reached where it could have. Yeah, yeah, we know, we knew Swerve probably wasn't going to win, and he didn't, but that's okay, Johnny's, I don't know where, I don't know where Johnny goes right now. Yeah, now he's in this awkward spot, along with Finn Balor, the two of them are sort of, Finn Balor didn't even make the bash. He didn't even make the bash, the two of them are in this what do we do now type of thing. Yeah, Um, because they don't want to go to the main roster. Absolutely not, that's career suicide. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Gargano, he already did his thing with Keith Lee, so he, that seems like too soon to go back there. You know, so I and know. I mean, we haven't seen Tommaso Ciampa since uh, he lost to Karrion Cross. That's right, yeah. Another, another body um, with not n- necessary direction. I don't know, form a tag team. Let's fucking yeah, take, fucking take that let's out figure, of it. Let's figure something out. But yeah. uh, we've got the new name for the, the cartel is now called... El Legado de Fantasma. Legado del Fantasma. <laughs> so we got Santos Escobar and Joaquin uh, Wild and Raul Mendoza taking on Drake Maverick and Breezango, who this week come out to this really cool Western conquistador entrance. That, I like Which it. one's the shorter one? Of the two? Yes, of the two. That's Tyler uh, Tyler Breeze. Breeze. Tyler Breeze, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Fandango has the, like, he has a couple tattoos on his arm. He's a little bit taller. Yeah. Okay, he's okay. Pa- he's got, like, the bell bottoms on And his he's pants. the one that's been hurt kind of off for and while. on for the last yeah. few years. Yeah. I think okay. he had Tommy John's or something. Eek. Uh, but they're back, you know. They're baby faces. They try their best. Drake Maverick, he busts his ass in this match. But uh, he can't get the win as Escobar hits this phantom driver. Yeah, just the Phantom Driver tag them. This was uh, I, I I do like the booking of a six man tag where uh, the two people who are really meant to fight don't make don't even touch each other until the moment's right. Yeah. And uh, this match exactly did that. It was uh, Maverick and Escobar. I don't think they both got in the ring together until they were you know like sort of like the last pairing. 
and guys down, and the other two, the other four, kind of worked the majority in the ring. Uh, yeah. This was fun. This was fun. I can't wait for Survivor Series when we're gonna get uh, the Legado del Fantasma against the Vagabonds. <laughs> That's yeah, gonna be a wow. cool. That's gonna be a that cool match cool. whenever that yeah. happens. Um, yeah, and Drake Maverick. Uh, yeah, the, yeah the, what's next for him? Who knows? The chase. The chase continues. I think. Of course, he's going to win that cruiserweight title. Sometime they have to pay it off. They have to pay that off to us at least. After he fake yeah. cried on Instagram. I mean, come on. I think it was real. You think? Oh, you think? Oh, right. So where do we st- where do we stand on that? Do we? Do you, where's well, the shoot? Where's we the sh- we do not have to agree on it. Well, okay. Where's but. okay? I should say where's the shoot meter on that? <laughs> no, I know. I think it was hundred percent real. It was. So we got worked into a. Shoot? I think he basically got his job back because of it. Because it garnered so much. Uh, just reaction. Right? Reaction. Okay. Like I, I, uh, I'm, inc- I'm, in- I'd be inclined to agree with you there, <laughs> that it was actually sort of in, like retrospectively. Uh, you know, maybe Triple H, Shawn Mike, they saw something in him that sort of retrospectively, they're like, you know what? Let's use this to our advantage, and uh, it can still work. Yeah. But uh, in the meantime, Escobar looks good. Mm-hmm. He's making that title look better. Yeah, very much so. And yeah. um, having good feuds around him, he has his boys around him. Yeah, build uh, the squad. Let's I'd be recruit. well. I'd be curious. You know, I mean, if th- this is a title which is which has stayed on NXT for the past however long, um, maybe those are the next steps for Johnny Gar- guys like Johnny Gargano, Finn Balor, Tommaso Ciampa. That'd be cool. Yeah, you know, uh, we we make a st- wake up a story about how they cut a little bit of weight. And uh, now, now we can uh, now we can now we can keep them on the show. Yeah, I don't even know some of them wouldn't even need to cut the weight. Uh, yeah, and there's no chance they're above they're they're more than 205 pounds or like you know, they're all yeah. 205 above 205 pounds. Uh, well, let's go on here. Santana Garrett is taking on Mercedes Martinez, who they've been hyping up the return of for a little bit. Right, she was at the the Rumble maybe. Yeah, she's been yeah you know, popping uh, in and out, popping around. Okay, uh, but I've always liked her, so it's nice to have her back. Uh, she just makes quick work of Garrett, squashes her, hits the fisherman buster, gets the win. Right? Maybe I'm thinking about her. Uh... She appeared in AEW. As that's well. what it was. Yeah, I think yeah. she was. Well, she's in... on both. Within the last year, she's been on both. Yeah. No way. That's pretty cool. Only she was in the uh, she was in the casino battle royal or the women's battle royal. Or something. Uh, yeah, a women's battle royal of some kind. And then yeah, I really yeah. just recognize her. Yes, she, she has a bunch of tattoos, and that's bunch of tattoos, facial piercings. Her. Good luck. I like her. I think that's how I recognize her. And she got a quick win in this uh, non uh, this non advertised match. A, li- a little more than a squash match. Yeah, a little more. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I'd like to see more from her. Yes. But it's time. It's main event. Time. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> the main event, the champion versus champion, winner takes all, NXT, North American title, both titles on the line. Adam Cole, Keith Lee. Let's do it. And we do. They get the nice big fight feel. We get the entrances where they follow all the way from the dressing room through the curtain. I love those little details. Which was pretty cool, and no, and that undisputed, music, no undisputed the- era kind of in sight. You know, now they they walk, nope. they no, not on around, and not patting on his shoulders, pumping him up or something. Like, there's a chance we're gonna get a clean, legitimate bout yeah. between these people. And they play that big, that music, like, like when they lower the cage, they play that sound. Oh, that like, yeah, almost like playing that as they're making their way to the entrance. Almost like that. uh like those sort of sounds, you know, when it's you're watching Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and then the, they're like, "Let's play," and then the lights yeah. go, do 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 do. Like it's almost, <laughs> almost kind of like that. Yeah. So we're getting a big fight, and uh, yeah, we just get right into it. They fight outside the ring towards the barricades. Keith Lee's like, "Hey, remember Johnny Gargano?" And then he goes for the same spot to pounce Cole through the plexiglass, but Cole avoids, and Lee just goes crashing through. Now he goes crashing through these th- these plexiglass boards. I'm telling you, they're working hard. They're yeah, working. they might keep them. They might keep them. They, they the may COVID keep. Yeah, they might. They might keep them. Uh, so they go. They're fighting outside the ring. They get back in. Go back and forth. Lee hits a spirit bomb, but Cole gets just a finger on the rope. Just one <laughs> finger. 
What if he missed that? Thing? Well, I, 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 dude, I was thinking the exact same thing. I was like, <laughs> I get it. You wanted the, but what if he actually forgot? Kind of like the ref didn't see. Yeah, like, ah. like, oh my god, yeah, that would be, uh, that'd be wild. But uh, Cole, he fights back. He hits a last shot, but Lee kicks out. Uh, and at one point, Keith Lee hits this massive clothesline where Cole just literally backflips onto his head. That was pretty cool, like Koto Ibushi style. <laughs> Uh, but then Cole, he survives. He hits the Panama Sunrise, but Lee kicks out of that. So the crowd's getting pumped up. Cole's getting pissed off. So he lowers the knee pad, exposes his knee to hit another last shot, which I never understood that part. I don't. Yeah, I also don't understand the exposing the thing. Like, but, uh, wouldn't the knee pad allow you to hit harder and you protect? Would, you would think, yeah. Because yeah. either way, it's an impact. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know, know the science behind that, but I'm sure there's a reason. Because <laughs> and it's not like he's like he's got kind of skinny knees. It's not like a big jack guy. Well, I think, <laughs> like, I think it's a. It could be a breaking the skin thing. Cause I think yeah, in a, I like bone on. You know, in the MMA, like a stiff elbow. Like in the MMA, they have they have gloves on. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, either way, he hits another vicious last shot and then climbs the ropes for another Panama Sunrise. But Lee catches him midair, nails a big power bomb, but holds on, lifts him back up, hits the Big Bang Catastrophe, and he gets the win. So he is your new NXT champion, first ever doubles champion. First ever doubles champ in the history of the... NXT. The NXT, baby. <laughs> so, yes, very well deserved, Keith Lee. Hell of a rain for Cole, but the Undisputed Era is over. Well, yeah, the Undisputed Era is no longer dripped with gold. You know, I, I maybe may not They've, go. That was the last remnant of it. They lost all the gold. Yeah. Roddy lost against Loomis. Bobby Fish and Kyle, Kyle O'Reilly hasn't even been around in months. I, I think, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a sickness thing, I think, for him. Yeah. He's immunocompromised or yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. He's diabetic or something like that. Uh, but, uh, no, I think I think this might be it for NXT Undisputed Era. Really? Where I we, don't know. Where, what, where else? What else can they do? It's they, either split up or get called up. That's they've nice. done everything they can. Um, little this this is this isn't trivia though. But um, I was checking out just Adam Cole reigns. So this one was four hundred and three days. Yeah, Man, uh, I'm, I'm glad he made it to four hundred. Between nice so he's had a reign of this. He had one reign of the PWG Championship and one reign of the Ring of Honor Championship. And combined, he has over 1,200 days of reigning. <laughs> it's yeah. nuts. He's, he, he's, he's, so he averages a 400 uh, He pretty much averages <laughs> like a, at least a full, a full year and a bit. Uh, I think That's... he held one belt for like 502 days, I think was his longest. I don't remember which one it was. Dude, the dude just straps gold on and he doesn't take it off. Yes. Well, um, yeah. Great reign. Great job, Adam Cole. But so now we move up. That's what I think. I mean, that I think it's main roster time. I mean, I I don't currently I don't know any of the current uh, financial situations of every or you know the contractual situations. I don't know what. I heard Randy Orton say he really wants to work with Adam Cole. Well, I think everyone wants to work. Well, yeah, anybody <laughs> wants to work with Adam Cole because he's the only one putting on five-star matches in the WWE. <laughs> I think it's, it's like that's like saying like, yeah, I'd love to be on LeBron James's team. It's like, yeah, cuz you're probably going to you're probably going to win. <laughs> Chances are well, you'll win. Uh Anyways, we get the big emotional celebration, confetti's raining down from the roof. Crowd's going wild. Keith Lee's crying. <laughs> uh, but then from the balcony, the evil Karrion Cross and Scarlet just look on. Because remember, they're still around. And they're laugh laughing maniacally. Laugh. See, this is this is where, and I think we were having this conversation a couple weeks ago, maybe on our last show, of just of that, who does Karrion Cross face? Because he is, there's nobody comparable to his size, right? Mm -hmm. And this rocket that they've seemed to strap firmly on him. Uh, Keith Lee is certainly the much more physically imposing competitor compared to an Adam Cole or, uh, you know, I mean, if Adam Cole had held both belts, no matter which one Karrion Cross comes for, he's got like 70, 80 pounds on the guy, yeah. <laughs> on the guy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that is another question. Which belt does he go for and how long does Lee hold both belts? Yeah. Cause, uh, which is it's fun. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I imagine he would lose the North American first if he's going to lose one. Yeah, that's that's usually how it goes. You know, lose the more de or the least desirable 
belt yeah. first. You know, I mean, when, once once we knew that Becky Lynch was on Raw, it was kind of like, yeah. okay, I got this belt, but don't worry, I'm going to lose it <laughs> like pretty Eventually, soon. yeah, a couple months. Yeah, you know uh, what? We'll... I, uh, oh, man, I, I really hope the Undisputed Era stays together as a foursome. Oh, yeah. for I, I don't want them want to get split well. up, but you're right. There are, there are some great stables up there in the main roster. As long as they don't New get Day lost. versus Undisputed Era. New Day versus Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, AJ Styles. They can freshen up that tag division. They could freshen up that <laughs> tag division. Oh, you want to talk about, yeah, they'll just fucking win that and then hold on to that for 500. There we go. And now all of a sudden the tag titles are back. 500 plus days. He, they'll unite the tag titles uh, yeah. because what's the point of having two shows anymore, right? There's yeah. there, there's no point. And um, and yeah, Karen Cross on looking. So he's wearing like this like suit and tie. I don't know if you noticed that. And it looked like he had one of not like a trench coat, but like a formal overcoat over top. Mm. I've never seen somebody who looks so different out like in their non ring attire and their ring attire. Like seriously, check out photos of this guy. Like out of the ring, he's wearing like glasses. He's not bald. He voluntarily shaves his head. So if he doesn't <laughs> shave for a couple days or like a week, he has like enough hair follicles growing in where you're like, oh yeah, you have hair. And then you see him in there. Very strange. Look for like before and after photos of Kerry and Cross. Uh, yeah, two yeah. different people, or it's like, or one that looks like a twin. He looks like two, tw- two, two different twins. Where you're like, yeah, you're they a, could, you're, uh, <laughs> they could do the storyline with that one day if he goes away for a couple months and comes back with hair. I think like, I, who's this? Yeah, I saw it was a photo from Chris Van Vliet's uh, page. He was like, hey, I have an interview with Kerry and Cross. Did not even, did not even look like him. Uh, but I, I don't I don't know what's going on there. But that was the Great American Bash. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I avoided it, but apparently the main event had been spoiled ahead of time. Um, did you hear about that I, controversy? I, did you see this? Did you hear about this? No, I did not. Um, so, apparently, uh, one of the members of the tag team, Indu Share. you know, that's uh, we have, who we haven't seen in a while. Um, yeah, yeah, they're two, uh, like, Sikh competitors. Yeah, right, yeah. I don't know. Whoever, one of them. Last week, after the first night of Great American Bash, they tweeted out a picture of Keith Lee holding both belts, raining down with the confetti. Oh, no. Uh, and it was quickly deleted, but, of course, the internet got a hold of it, and uh, I avoided it. I just saw the headline, spoiler, blah, 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 so I just didn't click it. But then afterwards, I went back to double check, and yes, it was spoiled ahead of time, the celebration, so... What an idiot. Is this... Yeah, is he an idiot? But then there was a conspiracy of people saying, well, we made it win it. Wait a minute! Maybe this was on purpose to get a ratings boost for if people know they're going to see an automatic what, title change. What was the match where they filmed two endings? Uh, it, was, it was Dream and somebody. Yeah, Velveteen and someone else. Yeah, they a Dream Gargano, I think. Yeah, Where something. Yeah, they had filmed the two endings and then it was like, who the fuck, knew, who the fuck knows? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it could be a big fuck up. It could be a contra- uh, conspiracy, but... Uh, I don't know. I'm happy I avoided it. So yeah. Why would you? Why would you do something like that? Like, it seems know. so stupid. Seems yeah, that you so even stupid. Tweet it. Uh, but anyways, uh, overall, uh, great American Bash. It was a great American Bash. <laughs> I can't wait until next year's uh, ed- edition of the show and to see yeah. Keith Lee's efforts moving forward. And they did not announce uh, there. Is, it's just a regular NXT next week to compete with Fight for the Just Fallen, a so. normal run of the mill. Standard NXT, uh, which is a show that we've come to love. Of course. Of course. We're going to get that women's title match, Io Shirai, Tegan Knox. Uh, more, hopefully, Shotzi Blackheart running people over. <laughs> With her <laughs> mini tank. And, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, that was it. That was a great uh, your, it, was a, it was a great Wednesday. It was basically, yeah, your stopgap takeover between uh, SummerSlam and In Your House. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine we'll have something, uh, some NXT pay per view in the summertime. They'll announce. Yeah, that's a night before something. <laughs> exactly, uh, Mike. I think it's about time that we just take a quick break, though. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. We're gonna come back with some trivia. We're also gonna come back with Fighter Fest uh, to see uh, which which of the shows on a Wednesday was better, or Thursday morning, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. All right, let's find out. Let's shoot, yeah, let's shoot, yeah, let's shoot. Butter, butter, yeah, let's shoot, yeah, let's shoot, yeah, let's shoot. Butter, butter, yeah. We're back here with the second half of the show, folks. Um, some would say, uh, well, uh, traditionally in the theater, 
Mike, and traditionally in uh, uh, the theater, musicals, and plays, the second half is oftentimes uh, it's going to be shorter than the first half by like you know by ten twenty minutes. Oh, did you did you know this? Um, I'm aware. Mm-hmm. But it's not a hard rule. It's not a hard rule, but anytime if you are at a play or musical that you don't enjoy and uh, intermissions come along and you're like, this is so grueling, you are more than <laughs> halfway done. It's not yeah. like I, – I think I think you could kind of – You, I, I might be wrong. There could be the one every so often, but uh, I, th- I think you're more likely than not you're going to get out of it sooner rather than later. Uh, yes. Uh have you seen Hamilton? No, I have not. I did see that it was on. Uh... Me neither. But I've been hearing very good things. I may watch it this weekend. Do you have? Uh, do you have? Di- since do you have... we're on the musical train, do you have Disney Plus up there? Ah, uh, my brother said, "Hey, you can use my account." So I'll, <laughs> I'll leech off him. Yeah. So, so yes, you have Disney Plus. Uh, yes. Because he's using it probably mostly for his daughter. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, and there is good content. You know, you got all the seasons of The Simpsons on there. Yeah, I was going to say, so the he's using it for episodes. his daughter. You're going to use it for mostly The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, every once in a while, though, you can throw on a Toy Story or, uh, you know, those classics, they still hold up. Yeah. The Lion King. Yeah, you're right. Uh, all the Marvel movies, all that shit's on there, too. But. That's a good point. That's, That's a good point. Plus, use promo code. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. In the head. For free month of uh, Disney Plus. Free month of Disney Plus. This isn't the Disney Plus podcast, though. This is the Professional Wrestling Podcast. And we got to keep going because Fighter Fest. Uh, Fighter Fest is a fest of fighters. But first, before we cover that fest of fighters, let's hop over to trivia. Trivia. Woo! Trivia. It's trivia time. It's trivia time, and we got questions for each other. Mike, I have five questions for you. Well, uh, it's hard for me to say how many questions you're going to get here That's because cool. okay. uh, you're going to have a gauntlet match. Oh, Jesus Christ, a gauntlet <laughs> match of questions. Okay. So basically, uh, it's going to be alphabetical. We're going to start from the letter A, and you're going to have to name pay-per-views that start with the letter. And you get three strikes, you're out. And I'm just gonna. We're just gonna run down the alphabet. If we get to a letter that doesn't have one, I'll tell you. Okay. But uh, so that's basically it. You gotta face the gauntlet. See how far you can get. Three strikes. Uh, and, and alphabetically, three strikes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Do you want me to just? I don't know how we'll how we'll break it up, or if you just want to go at one one shot it. Um. Well, you know what? I have uh, I have five questions for you. So, how, Mike, how about I give you my questions first, and then I run the gauntlet, and we'll just kind of okay. we'll just do it like that. That way, there's no interruption on either yeah, on either side. You know, it's something different. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it out. We'll see how it works. Um, yeah. Because Mike, uh, you're not you don't have to run a gauntlet this week. I just have five questions for you. Um, these questions, however, is the uh, are the youngest. Uh, title winners, title belt winners, belt okay. title winners. Sometimes we call them belts, sometimes <laughs> we call them winners. I'm going to give yeah. you um, a couple clues as to the belt and how it was won. You're going to have to tell me who it was. Don't have to tell me how old they are because uh, that would probably be difficult. Do I have to tell you the belt if it's not named in the clues? No, I will, I will the- name the belt. Okay. okay. I will Fair name enough. the belt, but uh, it's a very it's it's all a very short number of. I clues. guess I need to know the belt. Anyway. You do need to know. You do need to know the belt. <laughs> uh, okay. So okay. your first clue. Okay. So or sorry, your first. Uh, you're gonna get three clues for each belt. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Number one. This champion held the universal championship only once. Okay. However, they okay. do have the second longest reign. Of the belt, and your third clue, they won it in a fatal four-way on an episode of Raw. That would be Kevin Owens. K.O. Knocked out. Won it at the uh, age of 32, and he's still the youngest. Yeah, no, I'm sure that record won't last too long, but uh, until then, boy. Until then. Uh, okay, number two. Number two. This uh, This performer won... The World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam in Toronto. SummerSlam in Toronto. That has to be Randy Orton. Rand- I didn't even need to give you this other second clues. I guess were you there? <laughs> I don't need it. Were you there? 
I wasn't there. Well, I regret okay. it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sure if I we did, we did get to go to SummerSlam though. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I, I I know. Yeah, if you say a Toronto event, I'm usually gonna know. you. Oh, you know it's ca- you know it's just based there, on historical course. significance to our culture as a Canadian nation. That I mean, I guess if we still had those heritage commercials, they would play that. They, they would play that moment when Randy Orton became the youngest man. Or they would play that uh, Rock Hogan stare down. <laughs> Yeah, that too. That was a great. They would play uh, that moment. Have any have any big moments happened in uh, in Vancouver? I mean, of course, we do have the Montreal screw job, which would have been its own. Yeah, uh, uh, Vancouver or uh, the other Canadian I mean, cities. You know, I'm sure they've had pay per views. Mm-hmm. Calgary's had some big stuff back in the Bret Hart days. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, nothing on the level of a WrestleMania, SummerSlam stuff. Like Toronto. Like Toronto. Yes. Anyways, next. Okay, number three. (laughs) Uh, This performer won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship at age 23. Okay, uh, they, they last held their belt in 2010, which was their third reign. And it's the only major world title that around the world... That they've ever won so far. Huh, so they were the youngest to ever win the IWGP heavyweight title? The heavyweight title, correct. And they last held it in 2010. So it can't be guys like Okada. Again. What was the... And they've had it three times? Three times. Hmm. Who can it be? The young, uh, you know what? Let's say Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> it's damn right. Woo. Okay, good. Damn right. He uh, won it at the age of twenty-three. Did he beat Brock Lesnar? No, they they fought, but okay, he didn't. Couldn't, he I didn't knew, beat him for it. Them. Nor did okay. Brock beat him. Or did Brock get stripped or something? I forget. Brock got stripped of it. Yeah. That story is weird. Yeah, where a whole, his whole New Japan saga was kind of He weird. wins it and then just doesn't want to come back to Japan to defend it. <laughs> but he doesn't, like the physical belt, he didn't ever give back. So, yeah. so they had to like make a new physical belt. <laughs> very, yeah, weird, uh, very weird, very weird, very weird. But he held it for like 200 plus days or something when he did. So. Yeah, typical Brock. Typical Brock. No defending. Oh my God, just what a dick. Grab the belt and run. <laughs> drop it and run. Drop it and run. Okay, next question for you. Okay. Uh, this performer won the uh, TNA Impact World Championships. That's this is a uh, this was their title. Okay. 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 Uh, they are related to a Hall of Famer, WWE Hall of Famer, and they've okay. done something that nobody else in the business has ever done. <laughs> That's very broad. Exactly. Uh, no one has ever done. So they're related to a Hall of Famer, but they aren't in the Hall of Fame themselves. Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, they are related to a WWE Hall of Famer. And they're the youngest t- TNA world champion yeah. ever? Yes. Who's uh, related to a Hall of Famer, young champion? They've done some things no one's ever done. And no one's ever That's the done. Part that's really- <laughs> What could that part be? Uh, <laughs> uh, youngest. I don't know. I might just have to pick a name. TNA. Who is a TNA young guys? Hmm. Hmm. Tough one. Tough one. Says tough. Why am I? You're you're just blanking just because it happens. I'm just blanking just because. Just because. Uh, I just want to. <laughs> uh, let's just throw out a name and say Abyss. Abyss. Don't know who that is, <laughs> but uh, but no, Mike. The answer is the most recent TNA World Champion. Of course, we're talking Tessa Blanchard. 
Oh, uh, that's probably We're why. talking was... Tessa Blanchard. Of course, uh, she won the... It's because you said TNA and not Impact. It, it, it's the uh, it's the same thing. <laughs> I know it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's the TNA uh, World Championship. I'm, so, I'm sorry if the but, nomenclature no, no, no. got gotcha. you. Are, I, you um, got me. She, gotcha she, journalism. She gotcha journalism. She won it at the age of 24. Of course, uh, she's the only woman to ever win a World Championship. Yes, an alleged world champion. An alleged. Well, I, it, if we're counting the big one, the the made the majors. If Ric Flair won it, would he count it? Uh, I guess that's a question for him. I'm gonna say know. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say. But uh, yes, yes, Tessa Blanchard. Yeah. Who is uh, f- who has relinquished the title? Been stripped. Yeah, I think it was like a. Con- you heard that controversy? Wasn't it like a she was mean to someone? Uh, apparently, she's been mean to a lot of people. But then they're like. Uh, <laughs> I guess her contract was running up. They're like, hey, you're champ. Uh, you want to shoot some promos or do something? And she's like, nah. They're like, okay, you're done. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, her father works for AEW, so maybe, uh, you know, if she can become a nice person, she can go over there. I mean, it seems like uh, just, hey, be a nice, be nice. Yeah, be nice. <laughs> be nice. And, uh, Mike, I have one more question for you. No, no, now that I'm reading it, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's try it. It makes anyway. sense, but oh man, it made sense when I wrote it. Now I'm looking back at it, and it's I'm supposed like, to be the hardest one. Anyways, I guess it right? is supposed to be the hardest. Uh, so I couldn't decide which women's belt I because I did want to use a women's belt of some kind, and I couldn't decide. Uh, so I thought to like mash together both the Raw and the SmackDown belt. So I am still looking for one answer, but it kind of encompasses so it's the same person. Is that what you're saying? No, it's not the same person. It's just like because both belts, there's not really that much history. I tried to sp- smash both together. Okay, so there's two answers. There's one answer. Again, because like For neither neither one of them are like women's t- like the world titles. So I was like, okay, let's put them together. See exactly like it only. So makes you're s- saying the youngest of the two belts? Exactly. Yeah. Combined? So like, but the clue, okay. yeah, the clues are mashed together answers for both okay. belts. Like, I understand the concept. Take Raw plus true. SmackDown equals the answer I'm looking yes. for. Yes. Right. I, yes, I, I I couldn't really I didn't really want to pick one because both obvious both answers are fairly obvious I think by themselves. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, okay, I want to. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. Let's let's do. It. Uh, okay, so this this uh, this performer uh, was the second holder of their belt. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, Raw plus SmackDown equals they are tied for the third most reigns. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, they are on a path to become second for the most women's reigns. I want to say it is. Alexa Bliss and the SmackDown Women's Title. See, okay, yeah, uh, you didn't get it. You were really, really close, though. She was that second. Uh, we were looking for Sasha Banks. Okay, yeah, so uh, she I guess her, so, yeah, she was the second. Uh, beat her by a year. Sasha Banks got the got her Raw title before Alexa Bliss got her SmackDown. That's why I was kind of uh, like mashing them, mashing them together. Because I feel like it, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes I'm sense. sorry that that, that answer fell flat. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's still it's still fun. Because I knew if still I was fun. like Raw Women's Title, you would be like Sasha Banks, and then if I was like SmackDown Women's Title, you'd be like Alexa Bliss. And I was like, ah, fuck, mm. which one? That's alright. And I was trying That's to right. do something for the women. <laughs> we all we are very big supporters of the women's division on this show. Exactly. That's why I wanted to include them, but I thought oh. it's fine. Either way, their name gets mentioned. <sighs> now everyone knows Sasha's the youngest and Alexa's the youngest. If they there you go. Already. And now we know. There. Now we know. <laughs> now we know. But it's time for you to take on the gauntlet challenge. Oh, my God. So we're going to run the alphabet. Uh, I'm going to give you three strikes so it doesn't just end in one go. Okay. Because uh, we're going to start on the letter A, which is kind of hard. There's only one pay-per-view that started with the letter A. Okay. So this is any WWE pay-per-view, network special, anything under their umbrella. We're not going to include other companies because that could get too crazy. But, you know, this includes WWE, NXT, those those uh, special shows in other countries, um, so anything, anything under those umbrella, you know? Okay, okay. Now, I've been thinking about this dur- throughout the entire duration of me asking you <laughs> questions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, do, uh, like, if it's a uh, blank, does that count? That doesn't, that probably, does that count as the a? Uh? Uh, um, why do you have a uh? Well, I was just, because that, that was, that was what was going on in my head. I'm pretty sure so, I have an A. I'm okay. Well, 
Uh, I don't know. You can give me your answer, and we'll okay, let you know what? Okay. decide. No, no, no. I'm going to go with the in one. In the case of in the case of T, I will say the. Does you will not say count. the does not count. Okay. Yes. But let's start with the letter A. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to go with the one that I think is more likely. I don't want to take an ah uh, chance. So I'm going to say <laughs> that there was a pay-per-view, and I don't know how many there were, but it was called Armageddon. You are correct. Okay. There were 10 Armageddon. 10 of them. Okay. That's why I've heard it before. There's probably been a, a, yes, an, import, have, an important match been, there. Now let's move on to letter B. Uh, B is a little bit easier because I think we just had it. Yeah. There's I, been multiple Bs. I think we just had a backlash. That is backlash. On to letter C. On to letter C. Now this is one from a time that I only know of because I've heard of it. But Cyber Sunday. Cyber Sunday. We also have Clash of Champions. Which Clash. Of, oh, okay, yes. I have seen the Clash of Champions. Okay, yes, okay. But Cyber Sunday is very correct. On to, we will skip D. Actually, no, we won't skip D. Why? Is there no D? Oh, my God. No, there is a D. There is There's a D. A I was D. wrong. There is a D. Oh, fuck. Okay, but it has to. This is, this is, yeah, there's only one D in the history. That's why oh, I was. Fuck. It was hard. Okay, okay. Um, Dem, Dar, Dag, Duh. Maybe it's named after someone like Dudley. Damn. Fuck. Um, you know what? This one might be the hardest. This one might be the hardest. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take a take a scratch on this one. Yes, this one was one of the hardest. It was December to dismember. Fuck. I've, which was I've definitely heard of that too. Yes, it was. It was uh, under the ECW brand, but while it was part of WWE, they did. Uh, they had like an elimination chamber match. It was an awful pay-per-view. They only did one. Mm -hmm. But that is strike one. But I'm confident you can keep rolling here. Okay, we're going to move on. To What's my next letter? Letter E. Letter E. Um, oh, well, uh, uh, next week on the WWE <laughs> Network, you could watch uh, Extreme Rules. Yes, that you could. So let's move on to letter F. The letter F. Now this, I can't think of a fa... Uh, anything that even has an F in it, Unforgiven, nah, Summer Slam Backlash. What else do we have? Now I'm just kind of like la naming off shit that no, I've heard. Good. Now I'm there's, just like naming off shit I've heard of before. There's but. definitely you have watched pay per views under one of these names. I've watched it's a pay per view rough. under this name. It's yeah. unless it was something like a like a like they named it called like Fatal. Oh F no! It's my fa It's my uh. It's uh. Fuck! What's it called? 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 It was the what? Fast lane. Fast lane. Right, there right we go. before. Uh, <laughs> right before. For WrestleMania. WrestleMania. My favoritely right. apropos named. Um. Let's move on to letter G. A B C D E F G. Uh, and remember what I said about the, not counting for T. Oh, you're not counting for T. <laughs> so of course we would have the Great American Bash. Yes, of course. And that brings us to letter H. H would just be um, like Hell in a Cell. That would be. So let's go letter I. Letter I. Now there aren't there aren't many words that even kind of like start with the <laughs> start with letter I. So the. There aren't. Uh, eh, eh. Um. No. 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 We just had it. Um. In your house. NXT. In your house. Yeah. Any in your house is fine. There were a bunch, but I'll take in your house. <laughs> so we are we're on a roll now. Let's move on to the letter J. J, um, oh, Judgment Day. Judgment Day. Let's move on to K. K. Okay. Knock. Is it maybe it's like a, oh, um, no, 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 no. Uh, like King of the Ring. King of the Ring. Uh, there is, there is no L in no the history. L. Okay. Never been an L, so let's try M. M. Uh, M. The... The now I'm trying to think of M's. The Monday, no, the Mercy. No, there's no Mercy. Uh, keep that in mind. Keep, uh, keep. I will. I'll keep that in mind if I can make it past this letter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know this one. You know this one. Me. M. I, I like. I want to say main event, but I feel like you're not going to count. Would you no, even? Something more obvious. Oh no, Money Let's... in the Bank. Yes, yes. Uh, and on to N. N you can just say it. No mercy. No mercy. On to O. 
Oh, uh, I feel like there was one called like over the over the rope. No, um, you're close. Over the limit. Over the limits one. Yes. Uh, brings us to letter P. P. Uh, P. Oh, fuck. Huh. What starts with P? Um, I can't think of any like uh, menacing words that would start with P. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to think. Uh, maybe it's like a the. So, no. Yeah, this event last occurred in 2017. So you've you've seen one or two, I think. Hmm. But P. P. You, yeah, this one. Yeah. This one's stumping me. I, I was on a good roll there. Yeah, you have two strikes remaining, and we're getting pretty. Yeah, we're pretty getting pretty close far. to the end there. You know what? I don't know. I can't think of a P. Nothing's coming to mind. There is payback. Payback. Yeah. Payback. Yeah. Well, wasn't someone in that match, and uh, it was bad. Probably Roman Reigns. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're yes. right. Shit. Okay. So that, okay. That is. Yeah, yeah. That is strike two, P. and we will skip the letter Q. Q. Yeah. There's never been a Queen of the Ring yet. Not to say that Which, not to say there might not be. Not to say there might not be, but that brings us to letter R. The Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. Letter S. Uh, SummerSlam. SummerSlam. T. Would you say something like take over Toronto? Uh, I would allow it. Okay. okay. I would allow it. Okay. And there's also a very easy one as well. Uh, I guess tables, ladders, and chairs. <laughs> yeah, TLC. But anyways, that was just double. Okay. That moves us on to you. You. Um, well, unless there was something called, like, underground, under war, underwear, uh, no, how many, I have two strikes already, fuck. You, you have, you have one strike remaining, one and strike there's remaining. only three questions left. But I, but this, but if I do get another strike, if you, I if am you miss, If you miss this, you're out, so close to the end. <laughs> you! You, uh, um, There was twelve of... It was it was fairly popular. Twelve of these existed. Two thousand eight was the last one, which happened to be in Toronto. Yeah, I was gonna say it sounds like one of those pay per views that that yeah, it's a pay per view. I just I can't think of anything like big that happened there, or like a moment that I remember reading about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna say my guess though. I think it was something like Unforgotten. So close. So Rephrase close. it. I'll give you a chance. I'll give you a chance. Un it was a foul ball. <laughs> foul ball. I can't strike out on a foul ball. Okay, can't strike out a foul ball. It was close to unforgotten. Just something. Uh, un, un uh, like un unforgivable. So close again. Oh, <laughs> Another foul Another ball. Foul ball. Uh, was it just like un unforgiven? Unforgiven. Unforgiven. That's correct. Oh, fuck. All right, he I gets the line on the drive. <laughs> gets on base. Let's move on to the letter V. It's another hard one. Yeah, words like vengeance that comes into my mind. Uh, but That's whether it. Or not there was I'll no way. You. That's it. No way. <laughs> That's it. Vengeance. <laughs> I didn't even. That was uh, that was so, actually just me saying words. <laughs> I know, but I let you get it. Wow, uh, sneaked you know. in there. Okay, I, I, I'm on your side. I want you to win. You are on my side. Thank you. So, that was V. Which, uh, there is no X, Y, or Z, which brings us to the final one, the easiest one, the letter W. Oh, WrestleMania. <laughs> there you 35. go. 35. <laughs> there you go. The gauntlet. That was it, eh? Jesus. Was, yes. Oh, my I God. I wanted, you know, once you got that far, I wanted, I wanted to see it. I wanted to see it. So, it almost seems like, uh, it almost seems, you know, I, I pulled off my little Kofi mania. It almost <laughs> seems <laughs> like, uh... You know, we have a few letters to deal with, right? Why Why do yeah. we not have a... To me, you know, L is the biggest one that stands out. Like I lost something. <laughs> Last man standing. Last man know. standing. Or maybe or Q, Q, queen of the ring. They'll do eventually, I'm sure. Eventually, we will have a queen of the ring tournament. X, they could just change extreme rules, drop the E, extreme rules. Oh, eventually, it's just the letter X. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And then Y and Z, uh, I don't know. They could do something. Yeah, I'm sure they can figure something out. The uh, the yard stick, the the yard. This is a whole pay per view where Roman Reigns is in every single match. That's the whole. That's oh boy. Th that's his stip. <laughs> oh boy, well, I know. I miss Roman, right? 
Yeah, 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 it's been a while. I'm starting to miss Roman. Okay, Mike, no more Roman talk because Roman Reigns isn't even on this show. Not no, even in this near company. It. He's nowhere near uh, the Tony Khan and the Jacksonville Jaguars at Lee's Daily Lee's Place or something like that. Uh, because, of course, it's night one with AEW's Fighter Fest. AEW. All Elite. They coming for you, Vince. Better watch out. It's too sweet. Fighter Fest, baby. So... Night one takes place on Canada Day, so Chris Jericho had his nice Maple Leaf jacket on, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, Jim Ross was like, "Oh, you look like Don Cherry," and, which was a nice. I'm surprised Jim knows Don Cherry. Yeah, I also didn't know that their <laughs> worlds ever met. Yeah, he probably doesn't know he got fired. But, yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, and you know, they had the fighter fest. They had some plants set up. Uh, I think there's some bikini girls and stuff they were doing. Yeah, they didn't have the they didn't have the tents this year. They didn't have the those little right. What was the big what was the big fighter fest last year? It was just yeah another. It was around the same time June July. I'm trying to remember if anything like crazy happened. They didn't have the title belts yet, so it was just like yeah, I think like Moxley versus Janela and like a big I don't know street fight or something. Was that that night? Maybe. I can't. Anyways, we have night one coming up uh, tonight. (laughs) And we do actually have our main event. We know our main event's going to be this world title match, Mox and Hager. Uh, No. There's so many things wrong about what you just said. Didn't they just say that that was happening? No. Oh, my God. There was so many (laughs) things wrong that I just said. uh, (laughs) What are the words that I'm thinking about? I don't know. Hager is not uh, right. No, he he's going for the uh, right. No, he's going for the other belt. He's going for Cody. Yeah. I thought that was the main event, but yeah. And first of all, that was supposed to be the main event of night two, which is another thing wrong. And, right. Uh, oh my god. I don't know where yeah, my mind just, was right there. I don't know. I was just trying to help you I'm out. Sorry. But. Yeah. Okay, Mike. I guess you uh, you take the reins. Let's just stick to night one for now. We got MJF and Wardlow teaming up against Jurassic Express. Uh, so we just get more great, you know, Jungle Boy MJF. Their chemistry picking where they left off. Uh, Wardlow, Lucha, they're having the big man battle, so lots of fun. Jungle Boy hits a Canadian Destroyer for Canada Day, and Jericho loves it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was yeah. Canada Day. That was on Wednesday. It was Canada Day, yeah. yeah. Uh, then eventually, I don't know, uh, MJF puts on the diamond ring behind the ref's back. He goes to hit Luchasaurus, but he ducks, and uh, he ends up hitting Wardlow. So Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus follow up. Big choke slam. Moonsault. They get the win. Yeah. It's uh, Jurassic Express doesn't win that much these days. No, so it's no. nice to see. Uh, and you know, a little bit of tension between MJF and Wardlow there. They're, nope. they're slowly building that. The the dispersion of the two. Yeah. Uh, then they showed a commercial to hype up the first ever Puppy Battle Royal. Did you see that? I didn't know. What was that? Oh, I'll tell you about it at the end of part two. <laughs> so it's great. Uh, but then. Okay. We go to the ring for some AEW Women's Championship action. Hikaru Shida taking on Penelope Ford. Uh, during the intros, Kip Sabian shoves Shida. So Aubrey Edwards just says, fuck that. You're out of here. Uh, but he grabs the kendo stick on his way out to even the odds. So Penelope's on her own. Uh, but the bell rings. Shida right off the bat hits the big running knee. Goes for the falcon arrow. I shit my pants. I didn't want Penelope to lose this fast. And luckily, she reverses the Falcon Arrow. Uh, and then they just go on. They have a nice, proper match. Penelope looks very good in this match. She's coming in such a short time. I don't know if she's having. JR is like the match of her life. He's loving it. Yeah, uh, you're right. You're right. It was, uh, she's getting better. They were really selling it. And, you know, she, uh, she hit the Falcon Arrow. She goes for the pin. Penelope rolls through it into a cover. Gets a big near fall. Uh, everyone on the commentary, Jericho called it the greatest counter to the Falcon Arrow he'd ever seen. <laughs> And it was great. They were loving it. I was loving it. I was going nuts for this match. Penelope wasn't done yet, though, as uh, Hukara Shida goes for a big drop kick off the top rope. And then Penelope does, does the Matrix bridge, avoids that, hits a stunner, big two count. She's getting frustrated. Uh, so she grabs a title belt, but then Aubrey goes after her. So this gives Kip Sabi an opportunity to run down with the kendo stick. He swings at Shida. She ducks, gets the stick back, beats the shit out of him. Uh, but then Penelope gets back in the ring, hits the springboard stunner, another big near fall. I was having a heart attack. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but then eventually Penelope goes for a moonsault off the rope. Uh, Sheeta avoids it, hits two knee strikes, another falcon arrow, but Penelope kicks out. This was too much. 
Cheetah can't believe it. I can't believe it. So one more vicious running knee strike, and that finally finished Penelope. Cheetah gets the three count, retains the title. But this was honestly my my best women's match of the year, I think, ever for AEW. This, this, this was it. This was one of the best matches oh, I've seen this year for me. Wow. Um, Definitely the best women's match. I don't know. I loved it. Penelope, this was a star-making match for her. She looked great. Uh, even though she was a heel, she showed moments where she could be an amazing baby face. And both of them almost won. They almost had the win at several different opportunities, both of them. Yeah. And it was only uh, it was like an 11-minute match, but it just went good Yeah, it was good quick. Pace. It was just competitive the whole time. And uh, both of them pulled all of their trick bags out. This is, yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. Penelope Ford, future star of the division. You heard her here first. But we got another title match. The action doesn't stop here. Cody has taken on Jake Hager for that TNT title. This is what I was talking about. <laughs> yes. And uh, during the match, they advertise you can buy a three-pack of Cody's tattoo. You know, put it on your neck. <laughs> yeah, what's the deal with that? Who <laughs> and then Jericho's like, yeah, put it on your ass, Shimoni. And he's like, oh, stop it. Chris, uh, Chris, please yeah, Chris stop and Tony. it, Chris. <laughs> Put it on your ass. <laughs> but uh, no, this match was fine, but it was it was hard for me to to follow the women's match with this. It was a bit more slow pace, but, uh, you know, they work well. Hager, at one point, he chokes out Arn Anderson, slams his head around. Uh, but I don't know. He gets too distracted by this, so Cody gets the advantage. They go back and forth a while. Um, I think Jake Hager's wife slaps Cody at one point. Oh, one point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forget her name. She's been there. I don't know. So Dustin comes running out. He slaps Hager, not his wife. He kissed his wife before, though. <laughs> uh, and then Cody goes for the crossroad. It gets reversed. Hager takes Cody down to a chokehold. But Cody pulls through, gets the pin, and uh, gets the three count. Retains his title. And retains. Just a nonstop retaining. The ending was a bit awkward, but... Uh, yeah, it just kind of... But it was different. But it was different, so there you go. Yeah. And then I think afterwards, Hager beats up a bunch of refs, and then they said they suspended him. He suspended without pay, I should add. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that happened. Uh, <laughs> and then we get some tag team action. Santana and Ortiz taking on Private Party. And then Orange Cassidy comes out on commentary, which pisses Jericho off as he just sits there, <laughs> quiet and cool. Doesn't comment. But he still has the headset, though. Still got the headset, yeah, it doesn't say he a word. He was ready but, to uh, say something, he just chose <laughs> not to. Yeah, but uh, no, the tag match, it was all right. Uh, but probably the least heat of any match on the show, I don't know. Yeah. Matt Hardy was there, cheering for his new friend's private party. Yeah, there was nothing nothing at stake on this one. Yeah. Uh, eventually, the private party hit the gin and juice, get the win, and then Jericho gets all pissed off, throws water on Orange Cassidy, and he just gets up. Softly kicks over a chair and walks away. And then the locker room pulls them apart. Because <laughs> they needed to be uh, separated. Private Party's going to... They'll they'll be a top contender kind of soon, it seems like. They've... Uh, well, this match earned them a title shot. They've strung together a couple wins, right? Yeah. Uh, but, and I, but I mean, not just a contender. I mean, you know, in, in the picture. Yeah. As it's it relevant. were. As it were. Stay yeah, relevant. And uh, this is step one for them. Yeah. Uh, and the next is when Taz and Brian Cage come out. And Taz just cuts a promo saying what we already know, that the match is delayed an extra week to fight for the fall on July 15th. And then he takes a couple little shots at WWE calling them a slop shop or something. Something like that. Implying because, yeah, Renee got sick and that led to this. And anyways, that leads us into the main event of night one. Kenny Omega, Hangman Page defending those AEW tag titles against the best friends. Uh, who, uh, the best friends, they make their entrance, they get dropped off by Trent's mom, Sue. Trent's mom. And uh, her white Honda Accord. Yep. It's like, have fun, boys. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> gives Trent a kiss, and, uh, yeah, that just leads into a uh, good, fun match. Uh, FTR come out at some point with beach chairs and a cooler, and they just start watching. Yeah, because yeah, they have a match tomorrow night, or the next, uh, ne next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, so uh, Hangman and Kenny, they're in control. Best friends fight back. Match is going well. Uh, Kenny and Hangman set up for the last call, but the best friends avoid. Kenny gets dumped to the floor. Hangman gets hit with a strong zero, but Omega breaks the count, saves the match. Um, yeah, eventually, uh, Hangman, Kenny, they recover. 
Buckshot Lariat, last call. We get the last call and three count to retain the titles. But then, um, yeah, afterwards, FTR come to the ring with beers. And, of course, Hangman accepts one. Kenny takes one. They all toast, but then Kenny just pours his beer to the ground. Disrespect. Is that disrespectful? I know he doesn't drink. Uh, well, therefore, <laughs> yeah. I, th one but could, he could have just he could have just set it down instead of one wasting could beer. argue the disrespect came from giving uh, you give somebody a beer who doesn't drink who doesn't drink like he that, that just would put be, it down he one could, put it down I don't nicely. know I don't know you know picture. I would give it to Hangman say hey Hangman you love beer here's another one you know but maybe uh, it's Kenny Omega's torn past you know he hasn't touched a, a container of alcohol and. Well, you're on Team Kenny. I'm on Team Hangman because he calls Kenny an asshole for doing this. And they all argue. That's how we end the show. <laughs> and, that's how, and that's how we end the show. Hey, asshole, you wasted a beer. Because <laughs> that's the... But, uh, yeah, good tag match. I was, you know, I was kind of hoping I could have seen the best friends win this. They've been they've been having a real strong couple months here, but uh, yeah. not their time yet. Not their time yet, I guess. We just got to wait. Uh, but it sort of seems like whoever wins this big tag match next week on Fighter Fest will be the the new, that, the new contender, you know? Yeah. The new mainstay player, I should say. Yes. Should but say. Uh, let's just jump right into week two. No rest for the weary because Kenny and Hangman, they got to get right back at it and defend those tag titles again uh, against Private Party. So, uh yeah, good fun match. Not quite as crazy as the one we just talked about. Uh, private party. They put up a good fight. They fly all over the place. But Omega and Paige hit the last call. Get the win. Yeah, this was this was a little all over the place. Um, yeah. Who knows? They're gonna they're gonna keep winning though. Yeah, but there's yeah no no tension in this match compared to the other one really. Mm -hmm. So no. And then we get Joey Janela taking on Lance Archer, who just comes out. Uh, he always comes out with someone else. So this week it was Sunny Kiss that he tossed around. And... <laughs> yeah, and then he yeah. Just tossed... I, I wonder who like the yeah, just the the, the sign up list for the weekly person <laughs> that Lance Archer gets to throw during his entrance. Uh, like, you think it's like a short end of the you know they're each picking straws, and whoever gets <laughs> the shortest has to do it that week. Or yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they. Need, but uh, anyways, then he proceeds to just toss Janelle around the ring and. Uh, yeah, Joey fights back a little bit. Jake the Snake jumps up with his snake sack, which distracts the ref, and Sonny Kiss hits a 450 splash. But Archer overcomes, and then he hits a crazy blackout off the apron through a table onto the floor. And, uh, yeah, then he just slams Janela's head and pins him. That was I a cool finish there. I like the uh, the gutsy baby face uh, who, th who thinks they can. <laughs> Joey... Joe, Joey yeah, Janela, uh, the bad boy. Yeah, and he took a he took he took a beating. Yeah, big bumps. He's uh, yeah, he's that's what he's kind of here for. He's kind of here seems. for. I don't think he's ever had like a non-dark win. I mean, I can't account for what he's done on AEW Dark, but uh, yeah, yeah, but he's he's there. He's there, and Lance Archer is still super over. Yeah, so we'll see where he goes from here, but. Mm -hmm. uh, then Taz and Brian Cage come out for another announcement. Taz says, this is an iconic moment. Tonight, Mox was supposed to defend his title against Cage, but uh, that's going to happen next week. But I got something else here that I created decades ago. As Taz brings out the FTW World Heavyweight Championship, which stands for Fuck the World. He created this belt in ECW, and he presents it to Brian Cage. I didn't get what was happening here. So is this yeah, a new... So you, it's a real belt that actually was around in ECW. Okay. But, but it was it was kind of like the Million Dollar Championship where it's not like a real, real belt, but it's, you know, right. he just kind of gave it to himself. And and so is this like a... Does AEW acknowledge this? Is this like an official... I don't think, I don't think it counts as like a title reign or anything. Oh, I think it's okay. just a prop for a couple of weeks. Oh, but you okay. never know; they could turn it into something real. But. They could. That's a good point. See, that's where I was confused. I remember when I when I started talking, I could see yeah. him holding. He, a he belt. didn't explain the history. They, yeah, he didn't was, say like was this was from like, ECW. It was like here's a belt, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. Uh, you won. You beat Moxley. What? I'm just kind of yeah. clapping. So me. that's what it is. Fuck the world, FTW. Um, I don't know. We'll see if he carries that belt around for a but bit. then i did see later on in the show they used a brian cage graphic where he had that belt strapped over his shoulder 
Well, there you go. Hopefully I did see that. So, yeah, maybe it's like a thing, an unofficial thing. Who knows? Who knows? But let's go on. We got some eight-man tag action. Young Bucks and FTR taking on Lucha Brothers and Butcher and Blade. Ooh. So, yeah, nice to see Pentagon wrestle again. It's been yeah, many, it's many been months. many, many months. And this was just a go, go, go match. Everyone's jumping all around. Bunch of tag moves. Uh, FTR and the Bucks working really well together. They were like mixing and matching, doing their moves with each other. Double pile drivers, other crazy shit. That was pretty cool. Uh, probably the craziest spot, though. Ray Phoenix, of course, when he just runs up off the ropes, hits this springboard sunset Canadian destroyer onto the floor <laughs> that was on wild. the crowd. It was insane. <laughs> How does he do that? <laughs> I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, so crazy shit there, and then Penta and Phoenix, they hit the OB driver, which is another just devastating move. Another crazy, they just do so many pile drivers. All of these that, guys, just pile drivers, yeah. pile drivers. Slam in your head, and slam in your head. that gets them the win. Fun match. First big win for Butcher and Blade, who were there. Well, yeah, and you know, it was nice to, it was nice to see all the teams working together, too. Uh, Young yeah. Bucks and FTR certainly working together to make that final, uh, you know, that final drop off the apron mm -hmm. and uh butcher and blade are sweet yeah this was a nice fun match all fun overall match. yeah i mean these what four teams is these four teams like these eight yeah. guys like this is going to be the most action-packed match you can get kind of like on any show and it wasn't even for the titles <laughs> it wasn't even for the titles it just kind of had like that you know that that fantastic new japan tag yeah. feel of just a bunch of people just non-stop you know, action non-stop action uh, then we go on nyla rose here uh just taking on handicap match kenzie page and kylan king just another quick monster squash you know beats him around power bombs one on top of the other gets a three count I, but, love, uh, I love the classic pile-up pin. Yeah. <laughs> and then after, Nyla cuts a promo and says she's hired a manager. But she's not ready to tell who it is. So another another good old mystery angle. Another good old mystery, probably uh, <laughs> somebody from... Some old? old someone old from previous WW <laughs> or WCW times. Yeah. Uh, that, sort of uh, seems like the way, that sort of seems like the way to go. Yeah, so some intrigue. Nyla Rose, uh, yeah, she could use a little something to to, ele her to elevate her the way that yeah. Taz has elevated, the way that Arn Anderson elevates Tully Blanchard. There you go. Who else? Who else is in that that realm? On AEW, uh, Penelope Ford was pretty good for Sabian, but now yeah. she's on her own. Yeah, now she's on her own. Uh, but then we go to footage of Cole Cabana, who is very badly bruised. From last week, I don't know his whole side is just purple, and, but he's clear to wrestle. Apparently. And Mr. Brody, Mr. Brody Lee says, "I'm watching your back, so you know these kind of things won't happen anymore." So that uh, gives us the six-man tag: Cabana, Brody Lee, and Stu Grayson taking on SCU. And uh, you know, compared to the other tag matches, it wasn't quite as good, but it was still okay. Uh, but yeah, I guess the storyline just was uh, eventually Brody hits the big discus lariat on Christopher Daniels, but tags in Cabana because he wants to let him get the pin. So Cabana's happy. They get the win, and Brody just shakes his hand and leaves. So is he so is he on the team I mean, yet? I How think, long well, does it take to recruit somebody to your <laughs> weird wrestling cult? I think it's it's uh, it's only a matter of time. If he's not already in like Flynn. It's been like be two in. months now. He's he's it. He's it. Okay. What happened to that woman from the other week? Who, who was uh, it? Yeah, I don't remember her name. Um, yeah, I forget what, who it was. Well, I mean, of course, we all forget the woman who had to shave her head, and we never and we never <laughs> yeah. saw her again. Uh, uh, <laughs> whatever. Her yeah. name. Emily. Um, and then there was some footage earlier in the night of Big Swall arriving at the arena, and she was served with papers. She's not allowed in, uh, but then she sneaks in later, anyways. Comes over to Britt Baker, scrunches up the paper, and tosses it at Reba, which the force of that paper sends her back, and she slaps Britt Baker in that recently broken nose. And she just yells. Was... She squawks. <laughs> squawks. And that was our Baker for the night. I uh, hope, uh, I hope, I mean, she's now evolved to the, like, uh, soft knee brace that goes kind of, like, over top of your pants. Now, I don't really know where in, like, the, the knee recovery process that is. But yeah. she's not no longer like straight leg out thing. 
Well, I think she's already said she's returning it all all out. So all out, which is probably September. August. So uh, September, okay. I think Labor Day timeline area. So Great, that think. could be her first match back. If that's a yeah, that's a an big. appropriate timeline, and it'll probably be a big one. Yeah, Baker versus I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Bigger than Big Swole. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, but let's go. Main event time. Orange Cassidy is in the main event taking on his rival, Chris Jericho. And, you know, right off the bat, uh, firstly, we don't get to hear his actual music very often. Normally, he comes up with the best friends. Yeah, yeah he had his own music this time. His own music. I, and I, right, I, I don't remember what it sounds like. Yeah, it's not that catchy. <laughs> uh, but right off the bat, he's serious, though. He comes out. He takes off the glasses, his vest, his shirt, uh, sends the best friends to the back. He's ready to go. Uh, but, you know, once they're in the ring, he still does his hands and pockets gimmick. But he comes out lightning fast. Uh, Jericho, of course, Chris Aubrey has to referee the match. So he's arguing with her, <laughs> uh, which allows Santana to attack with a loaded sock. But, you know, Orange Cassidy, he's showing off his wrestling skills. I think Jim Ross, he gets the gimmick now. He's rooting for him. He loves it. Uh, <laughs> you, you know if JR gets it, <laughs> it's going to take him a little while to get it. But once he yeah. does, he loves it. <laughs> but, you know, Jericho fights back, takes over the match for a bit. He keeps trying to cheat and grab the rope for leverage. And Aubrey keeps catching him, and eventually she just kicks his arm to break it off. <laughs> uh, and then Orange Cassidy does his little shin kicks, but then he finishes with a real big super kick for near fall. Hits the big splash for near fall. Crowd's starting to get super hyped. Uh, yeah, he hits another diving DDT. He's getting all these close calls. Uh, Jericho locks in the Lion Tamer. Orange Cassidy reverses that. But then this is when Ortiz just kind of splashes a whole jug of orange juice jug in of Orange OJ, Cassidy's face. Just the whole thing. The ring was wet. The was ring was sticky. Yeah, sticky. So best <laughs> friends come out. They attack Santana and Ortiz. They take them out. Aubrey's just watching all this chaos. And then behind the back, Jericho nails Cassidy with the baseball bat, followed by a corn break, code breaker. But OC kicks out. He fights back. He hits some sweet moves. More near falls. And poor Aubrey. She has to slide in this orange juice to make the count <laughs> in a big puddle. Uh, but orange juice, he goes for his big Superman forearm. But Jericho counters with the Judas effect. And that ends the match. Nobody kicks out of the Judas effect. Nobody has kicked out of that Judas effect. Uh, but when they do, this was and this was this was a great match for everybody. Yeah, Orange Cassidy, even a defeat, still looks legit. He oh, got the main course. event against a legend and I mean, hold he, his own. He's zero for two in pay per views, and, and his stock hasn't gone down. <laughs> his at stock all. has only uh, his stock is stocks or has only gone up. Uh, <laughs> Orange, for it. Orange Cassidy rises to the occasion. That's yeah. what he does, you know. He is, uh, and, and it he, took shenanigans to beat him. Santana it took shenanigans to beat him, and say what you want, but he has the ability to perform at a genuine main event character level. Oh yeah. Oh, of course. He's the, he's the man, future world champion. Future world champion. We said it even before there was a world championship. I exactly. think we yeah. said we future and world. That, champion. This is an ongoing thing. One day he's gonna finally beat Jericho. We're gonna go yes. Yeah, it could be. It could be, you know, that could be his first main roster win. There were so many opportunities during this match where I, I was like, oh, is he is he actually going to win? I thought he was going to win. It was that was the drama. We were both sucked right in. It was we were both match. sucked right in to uh, this week's Fighter Fest. That was it. That was the whole show. That was it. But uh, most importantly, as it was advertised last week after Dynamite on YouTube, we get the promised All Elite Wrestling Puppy Battle Royal. This I did, was legit. I you didn't should, see this. Uh, what was this? You should seek this out on YouTube. It was just a short little clip. Aubrey Edwards is there to give us the rules. All four paws must touch the floor. If they pee or poo in the ring, they are eliminated. Last puppy standing wins. So basically, they had a whole little ring set up. They played entrance music. The puppies would come out. Uh, so each puppy was kind of sponsored by a wrestler. So they had a Nyla Rose puppy, a Hikaru Shida puppy, things <laughs> okay. like that. Okay. And then, like, the wrestlers would pop up on the screen, like, cut a promo. So Nyla Rose is like, I'm going to kick your ass because all these other dogs are bitches. <laughs> so they, they kept it real. It was great. So uh, basically, they just had puppies just fucking around in the rings, toys. Eventually, they would fall out of the ring and they'd be like, oh, we have an elimination. So uh, <laughs> the greatest part was, though, Tony Schiavone was calling the match and he was treating it real. And at one point, this puppy just, like, 
walks over to the ropes, falls through the ropes to the floor, and he's like, Tope Suicida! <laughs> Tope Suicida! <laughs> I was dying, and my girl, Penelope Ford Puppy, uh, Puppelope Ford, she wins. <laughs> uh, and it was all for a good cause. Tony pops up and says, these puppies are up for donation. They're all born on Mother's Day. Up for adoption. Named after wrestlers. Yes, not up for donation. <laughs> up, up for donation. <laughs> yeah, these are puppies available to be donated. <laughs> Uh, so Penelope Ford continuing her her role, and she wins the puppy battle royal. Wins the um, puppy battle royal. Congratulations and to then, uh, Puppelope. Pup, what'd you say, Puppelope? Puppelope Ford. Puppelope so. Ford. It's hard. To, uh, so that was great. They did have a men's puppy battle royal. wasn't as good. Orange Cassidy puppy came out with glasses. That was the best part. <laughs> and a little jean jacket. <laughs> yeah, but then the MJF puppy dumped Moxley and Orange Cassidy to the floor. Ooh. So Maxwell puppy wins. Maxwell puppy Friedman. <laughs> MPF. And that was your Puppy Battle Royal. I enjoyed it. That was the Puppy Battle Royal. I'll have to check it out. It's up on there on YouTube, you said? Yes, on the AEW's channel. Okay, I'll check that out on YouTube. Uh, but that was it. You know, that's that's the time that we have for this week's show, and that was both the Great American Bash and Fighter Fest. Mm-hmm. Great shows uh, overall on both weeks. It was such a great time. Uh, yes. Mike, I think we should end the show the only way we know how with the Wrestler of the Week. With the wrestler of the week, of the week, wrestler of the week, of the week, of the week, the wrestler of the week, of the week, of the week, wrestler of the week, of the week, of the week, the wrestler of the week. So we have a lot. We have like two weeks of material here to pull from. You know, I'm. Th- I'm yeah, this was. One I'm, of those tough weeks. One of those tough weeks. I'm leaning towards, you know, of course, our Wednesday night double war. Yes. Um, it was always going to be one of those. It was always going to be one of those. <laughs> and just because we haven't seen him in a while, um, just because he puts on great matches, he does great cool things, and because he got the pin in his match, uh, I'm going to go to Pentagon Jr. this week. Pentagon Jr. It's always so – you forget – you, you you almost it's one of those you don't know what you have until it's gone type yeah, things no, you don't know he has been out of contention of this title for months now you don't know you don't remember what pentagon and ray phoenix can do until you see them do it and you're like oh yes. yeah i forgot you're insane <laughs> they were very impressive as always as always the one that stood about stood above all for me you know i always enjoy those those moments those matches where we say this is a moment in their career that Everything changed, and that's Penelope Ford, of course. The amazing match. My woman's match of the year right now. I already, I was writing it down before <laughs> you were even, before you even finished speaking. Yeah, it's, because that was what, that was the night one. Night one. Where, uh-huh. and you left the show, and I'm sure you did. You, you know, and like you just said, you wish that was the main event, but who knows? Like, do you even, do, do you think anybody knew they would put on a match that was that good? It's hard to, how do you, how do they, how say, do they book that kind of stuff? You know, it's I like. she did. Yeah, she definitely opened a lot of eyes. Yes, hopefully we'll see her involved in some kind of picture, title picture sooner rather than later. Yeah, you know, she's the she's the top heel right now, I think. If Nyla Rose is doing other shit, who knows? Yeah, she but could be. I don't know. I love it. Yeah, short of Britt Baker, she's like the or she could be like the top or one of the top competing heels. Yeah. Penelope Ford, baby. Penelope she Ford. Is- Quickly shot past Kip Sabian in relevancy. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly shot past, and uh, hopefully we'll see some more stuff out of her next week. That's all the time, though. We have Mike. Remember to rate, review, like, and subscribe because it's everywhere, you know. Uh, do we have anything exciting? We have, well, we have two weeks until Extreme Rules? Yeah, two weeks. We got Fight for the Fallen next week. Thank God. So we do uh, have a little time <laughs> to prepare for a pay-per-view. Yeah, and then yeah, after that, we'll have the horror show, and we'll see how... What the, the horror show! I'm looking forward to how spooky it's going to be. Yeah. Okay, that's all, <laughs> that's all we got, Mike. Uh, anything else you got to say? No, that's all. That's all. Mike, you take care of yourself. We'll see you next week. All right, bye. Shoot.